Now, this track is where things start getting a little bit awkward. You see, some plugins that I used to make these tracks were plugins that I only had on my laptop and haven't really bothered to get back on my PC, usually because I don't really use them anymore and it would be a hassle to set them back up, or sometimes because of other reasons. Uh, as a result of that, I am missing some compression plugins on some of the drums, so if the volume bouncer sounds a bit weird on them, that is actually a, fact, a product of the fact that, you know, this isn't technically exactly the original. But as well as that, Murder's project file is the oldest one. Even though I'm not... Actually, no, this was the first one I started working on, really. But when I first started working on this, I didn't even plan the Avian Ohm DP yet. In fact, this whole intro hadn't been made yet. I started with the drop, and this was me trying to make a sort of imitation of Trinity's track, Fat Reaper, with the intention of making it sound more different later, which to be fair, I still kind of did. But it turned out a lot better than I thought, even though it wasn't exactly super accurate to Fat Reaper. The only problem is, that since this was made in FL Studio 11 and is so old, there's a lot of differences. So, already we're at the drop, I've kind of been talking over it, but you might notice it sounds a little bit weird, a little bit different if you've actually heard the original. Unfortunately, the changes they made to Fruity Granulizer actually broke the track, and now all the automation clips are incorrect. Uh, I use a lot of Fruity Granulizer in this track for the basses, and it really messed with the sounds. The sounds in this version of the track are not super accurate, but I still want to keep this because technically if I can find the precise locations that I need to, you know, move each automation clip to to make it all sound correct again, I've still got everything I need to reconstruct the track here. So yeah, I've never bothered to do that obviously because I've never needed to and it'd be a lot of work and be very tedious. But I still want to leave the door open to because I'm very happy with the main base in Murder and I think it's a shame that I don't really have an easy copy of it anymore because of the fact that FL Studio 12's update to Fruity Granulizer broke the sound. Uh, it really sucks. Um, anyway. Oh, in fairness, as I should also say, this is technically not the most recent version of the file. It's basically up to date, but if you hear the original, there's also a bit of a fade-out orchestral sound that comes in here, which unfortunately is not saved in this copy of, Zip, of, the, of, of the track, because you might notice this is called Murder Zip, uh, instead of just Murder, like Omen, which is called Omen. Uh, and that's because uh, I kind of had to split it off into multiple versions at one point. Um, and this version basically has everything, but there are a couple very small changes that I made last minute that aren't in this version. Uh, I wasn't able to send that version over to this PC, so yeah. Anyway, we're getting to second drop now, eh? but either way, uh, actually I might want to stop here already. Um, you can kind of get the idea looking at all this. Uh, I decided to put the audio file for the original track here, since so much of this is kind of messed up in the, uh, you know, in this version. So you can kind of hear what the exact original should sound like and all that, and you can see how the bass is supposed to sound like if you haven't heard this track before. But yeah, either way, with this track, um, I just really want to make some nice, aggressive basses that just simply they just sound really satisfying to listen to, and I think I nailed that. Uh, it's really aggressive, and as well as that, I was really happy with this intro. I think this is one of the best intros I've ever made for any of my tracks, because I was going for a vibe, but I think I nailed it. You see, with it being called Murder, a lot of these tracks, I knew that what I'm doing, making the track about is something so abstract that, you know, there's not an obvious, like, emotional story going on in the track. But at the same time, there is a way that you can go around about making the music feel thematically coherent. And so for a track called Murder like this, I thought that maybe I should try and make it so it feels almost a little bit hip hop -y and sort of quote-unquote angry, I guess, for lack of a better word but then have that over classical music, like composed but angry. That feels like it'd be really fitting for a track called Murder. Anyway, yeah, you can hear how this gets fucking brutal <laughs> at the actual drop. Let me set it up briefly for a moment. <laughs> And then there's the second, the B section, which I love. That B section, genuinely, I think might be the best... Maybe. It's definitely one of the best sections I've made of any drop for any track. I am really happy with how it came out. Uh, but yeah, 
The main problem with Murder, in my opinion, though, as a track, is that while the first half I think I had it all together, the second half gets a bit messy. You see, as I mentioned, the lag was painful on my laptop, and of course the lag got worse the bigger the project got. Now, this has always been a really big problem for me. I hate it when other dubstep artists will make a drop, and then for the second drop they will literally just do the first drop over, or the first drop over with some slightly different drums. I think that's really lazy and I think it's a massive letdown when that happens. So I wanted to not have that happen in my tracks. I wanted to always make it so that at least something, at least slightly important, is different in the second drops. And so I started maybe putting in an effort. Actually, I thought I'd turn it up for the second drop, but actually I, I kind of think I need to continue. Uh, either way, this part of the second drop is very similar to the original. It's just kind of lower pitched and in a different key. Uh, but it's the same stuff overall. Although it does have some effects on the sound, I'll get to that later. Um, but either way, uh, I wanted to m mix things up a bit with the second drop because I always do that and I feel like it's just so lazy when people don't do that. But the problem is that I also would have to work with an extreme amount of lag that wasn't there before once I got to the point I was making the second drop, which would make it really hard. And so I think what I got came out really messy, if I'm completely honest. <laughs> probably get what I mean from that. It got, not outright bad, but pretty messy. I think that's the biggest problem I have with it in hindsight. I always, I think that honestly, the first half of Murder I made has aged really well. I think considering how long ago I started making this, like considering I finished Avian Omens like th uh, over three years ago now, um, and it would have been much long- no, actually, sorry, around three years. I don't think it's quite over three years yet. But it certainly would have taken longer than that. Like, the gap between when I first started working on Murder, it's probably something like four or five years. If it's that long ago, I've got to say, I am very happy that, like, the first half has aged so well. I genuinely have nearly no complaints about it, even now. But the second half definitely gets really rough. Again, I can't blame myself too much since I had to deal with lag at that point, but yeah, of course, I'm really happy with this. Um, that being said, uh, I think there's something I forgot to cover. Oh yes, of course. Before we move on though, I want to talk about this sound. <laughs> So you can see that, okay, this is kind of what I mean when I say I used to th think that my music theory was bad, but honestly, I think that I had a good sense for how to make melodies and progressions uh, even back then. I was just bad at starting because this came improvised practically out of nowhere. Like, I had no plans to add this melody in the B section of the drop, and it just sort of started happening. And I was like, damn, I don't know where this is coming from. Um, because when I was first try trying to make this track, I, was, I really struggled even just starting making any melody. But then once I got into the bit where the B section was, I just had a feel, had kind of got the feel for where I wanted to put all the notes until eventually I had this, which I still think is a really good melody. I really like this. I think it came out really well. Either way, uh, that would be just about everything I think I need to cover in Murder, since most of it kind of got a bit messed up anyway. I guess the only thing I will say is that I'll briefly kind of replay the ending again, since uh, it was a bit quiet earlier when I played it, uh, because I think it 
comes out really nice. I think the ending, at least, is quite nice, even if the rest of the second half is a bit of a mess. <laughs> Oh, actually, there is one other thing as well. I completely forgot to talk about the bass. This bass, I've reused this once or twice in other tracks, but not that often in fairness. But this ba bass, despite how simple it is, is one of my favorite basses I've ever made. It's such a satisfying little kind of vocal bass. It came out so good, this. I don't even remember what I did to make this. Sorry, I just want to take a moment to... So I got like a sine wave with some extra harmonics. I guess I just kind of did that by feel. And is there, is there literally no other... Is it is it just that in, in a filter? I don't know how it came out sounding this good. <laughs> I guess it's literally just that. And then it's in track 26. What did I put in, in terms of effects? I don't know, maybe the effects are putting in a lot of work. I disable this. Well, they definitely make it sound better, but honestly, even without the effects, it's pretty good. Wow. Huh. Yeah, I, I, I'm surprised that I managed to make that before, because I'm usually really bad at making basses like that. Even though they're technically quite simple, you know, it's a lot of fine-tuning usually to get those to sound good. I guess I just kind of looked into it. Oh, and also, you can see how scattershot some of this stuff got, like how, how long I've spent making each of these parts, because... Yeah, we have 104 patterns in this project. And this isn't even the final version, as I mentioned, there's a couple things missing from this one. That, sh that should tell you all you need to know <laughs> about how, how long <laughs> it takes to make some of these. <laughs> anyway, with that done, let's move on to piteousness. Hey, so just quickly, uh, two things. First of all, you might have noticed the void has returned. Since the recording of that last bit and this bit that I'm just ed editing in now, I have gotten a new monitor, and it looks like the different dimensions means that the little cover thing I used to cover the bottom doesn't fit anymore, as you can see. Um, well, at least not quite. Actually, no, yeah, it doesn't fit. For a second, I thought it fit. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, but all I was going to do is I realized after already recording this that I left out something, and usually I'll just let it slide because it's just one small thing, but there's no way I can let this slide. There's a little sound that is in this track. It's the bit that uh, gets played here. <laughs> And this sound, oh my god, I, it sounds so much different inside FL Studio compared to in the actual final version. You see, this sound, uh, again, I'm not going to get deep into it because of the whole, you know, sound design issues of it actually being quite complicated, but this is um, a sound that manipulates the sample rate uh, to create its unique tone, uh, basically creating a frequency so high that the computer can't keep up with it and it causes weird things to happen to the sound, but that's 100% intentional, and, you know, it creates an effect on the sound that's really cool. But the problem is that that means that certain things about the sound change audibly when it goes from trying to simulate it inside FL Studio to when it actually outputs it as an audio file with a set sample rate. So actually, the version of this inside FL Studio sounds so much cooler, as I'm about to demonstrate. It's just so fucking aggressive, but I love it. 